we can get started and try and still keep inviting people in if I can. Um, so for those of you, I've got lots of pieces of paper, so you have to get, excuse me between the pieces of paper and everything else. Um, I'd just like to say thank you so much for joining this evening. Um, it's lovely to see so many of you from so many places all over the world. Um, I really feel very delighted that so many of you chosen to, to join in with us this evening. Um, just a couple of little bits of housekeeping. I already mentioned to um, keep yourselves on mute if possible, then it's just uh, not too distracting for anybody else. If you'd like to pop any questions in the chat, um, you're more than welcome. Like I said, I'm gonna be monitoring everything this evening on my own here. So I will get to the chat questions if you have anything at the other end um, that needs to be. It's not really a webinar as such, but you might have questions for some of the presenters at the end, um, they're probably killing me silently now right now saying no we didn't agree to that um <laughs> so uh but th that's that so if you want to pop anything in the chat you're more than welcome to do that um just a little bit before we start um uh, at the end i will be giving you the access to the exhibition so this evening is a bit of a sort of a welcome as if you were going to a real exhibition um, I thought it was really lovely to have this opening event so that the individuals that have been part of it can tell you a little bit about their experiences and about what they've put on the wall, um, because it's not a real exhibition where we'd have all got together with a glass of wine in hand. I've got a cup of tea, no wine tonight, but some of you might have, I don't know. Um, so that was uh, for that. So I will be also, wherever you picked up the link from to follow this, I will also be posting the link to the exhibition in every one of those social media places as well. So you can either utilize what I tell you at the end, or you can go and find the link from one of those locations afterwards. Um, other than that, I think we're good. Let me just check if there's any more people in the waiting room there at the moment that aren't. So I'm gonna get started and tell you a little bit about uh, why we're all here. So um, the title of the exhibition is My Journey, My Project. And what has been happening is for the last year, starting in January, um, nine individuals have taken part in a year long project mentoring course. Now, the idea of uh, this was to introduce the concept of working towards a project. And anybody that's ever tried to start a project and tried to keep it going will know how hard it is to do it on your own, mm -hmm. how good it is to have somebody to be a little bit accountable to, or somebody to bounce ideas off or give you a little bit of support when you're like finding it hard going. And that was the whole idea of this project was to bring a group together who could support each other and, you know, enjoy their experience. Now, every single person has done a completely different project. That was never the idea that everybody was going to follow the same project together. Um, and people have come from all over the place, as you're going to see this evening. Um, so we've got people from Australia, um, we've got uh, Americans, Finns, Norway, Brussels, that's Bruges, Brussels isn't its own country. <laughs> um, I've probably forgotten another people, English, uh, Scottish. Um, so a, a good old mix there. So it's been really, really lovely. Um, so the project has worked all year and um, every month we got together online and we spent a couple of hours chewing fat over various subject matter related to creating projects. And then in the interim, every other session, we've all got together and we've looked at how everybody's projects are going. Um, everybody's had a chance to ask questions, feedback, that kind of thing. And then behind the scenes, everybody's also had a Facebook group to be interacting in and helping each other out with lots of questions doing the homework that I set, all that kind of thing. So it's it's been a really, really lovely group to work with this year. Now, um, when we started this, the idea of an exhibition was never even planted even in my head, let alone these guys here. Um, and about halfway through the year, I thought, well, actually, wouldn't it be a lovely idea to put an exhibition on? Because what happened was the work blossomed over the year. And I became so involved with everybody's projects that I felt so excited and so blessed to have been part of them. I felt they needed to be spread further than just our little group of nine. And that is why you're here tonight. And that is why we put this exhibition on so that more people can enjoy uh, these nine very special people's work, um, which I'm sure you're going to agree that that's the case. 
Um, I'm so proud of each and every single one of these guys that's going to be in here this evening. Um, everybody's worked so hard. Everybody's had ups and downs. And as we talked very early on, the journey is never a straight one. Some people have to take side roads, go through town, stop at the pub, you know, all these kind of things. You kind of get lost on the way sometimes. So it, it's been a really, really lovely journey to share it with everybody. Um, my vision was essentially to help and inspire um, and to support this evening is not about me. This evening is about the guys that you're going to see present to you. And so it's a real delight to be able to share this with you. Um, to my second. So I think without further ado, what we will do is go into the exhibition area. What you're going to do is I am going to walk you through the exhibition very gently. Uh, and each of the individuals will present to you um, what they would like to say about their project, what, what you're going to see on the walls. I'm not going to go to every piece of work on the wall one by one what I would do is the idea is that you can see what's going on behind the guys you can see what they've done and then later when I give you the link that's your chance to go and have a wander around the exhibition in your own time and go and really enjoy it at the end after everybody's had a little speak and we've looked at all the work I will just give you a few tips on how to make the most of it when you go around the exhibition later um, how to um, find your way around and enjoy it the best you can Okay, right. So I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully, fingers crossed, this all works okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. So welcome to our exhibition here. Um, I found when I um, came up with this idea of having an exhibition, I did a lot of research into it. And the people that you see tonight will know how much <laughs> effort I've tried to figure out how to put this all together and how much time we've all spent trying to put it all together um, and make mm. it as good as you can. But essentially what you can do now is when you come in later, you can walk around this as an, a real exhibition in your own time. You walk through rooms and you'll see how we work. So I would just like to, I will tell you how to use all the sort of buttons and that kind of things to start with. But the first artist I would like to introduce you to is Scotty Cantrell from um, North Carolina in the USA. And I apologize, Scotty, if I haven't pronounced your surname correctly, because I really should have asked, especially all of those of you have the, who have the foreign sounding names. I don't think I've ever really used your surname when we've got together. So um, if I haven't, I apologize. But if you would like to take the floor and tell us a little bit about your project, that would be wonderful. Yeah, uh, thank you, Charlie. And um, and I, I can't tell you how delight delightful it is to um each month have someone call me scotty because um it sounds so much more musical than it does in the states where it's it's kind of flat you know scotty um i uh i live on the east coast of the united states in durham north carolina and durham sits in what i would say is the forested middle of a long state that stretches from the Blue Ridge and Great Smoky Mountains to the Atlantic Ocean. And all around my home, thanks to the Eno River Association, there are multiple access areas to the Eno River, which is a picturesque 40 mile waterway that is home to countless wildlife and plants, many, many endangered. Um, since 1966, when the association organized to stop the city from damming the river. They have linked with the state, the city and other conservation groups to buy and protect more than 7,500 acres in the water basin. This is a remarkable, radical feat. Uh, you might be interested to know that it was a, a British American, Margaret Nygaard, who spearheaded this, this effort. Uh, when I retired five years ago, I decided I wanted to improve my photography and do an environmental project along the Eno, which has been my sanctuary and a place I took my kids to be in nature. My hope was that it would help people who are becoming complacent, 
connect with this wonderful resource or their own river or waterway, wherever they live, and recognize that our waterways, if they are being protected at all, are no longer safe with the growing menace of climate change. Thanks to Charlie, who showed me it is possible to take creative for, uh, photos in a forest and this wonderful supportive group, I was able to complete this project uh, connecting with the environment, I mean, with the Eno you know, this year. Uh, using intentional camera movement, I tried to capture the serenity of the paths and the trees that depend on and lean toward the water and the water itself as it tumbles over stones through wet and dry seasons. I use black and white to show the bony fingers of the roots as they reach for the river and communicate with each other. And I ended with a color photo of the river cooter basking on a stone. He is a symbol of hope for me because I have to believe we can do something to save his home. In addition to Charlie, I need to thank biogeochemist Bill Schlesinger, who is the former dean of the Nicholas School of the Environment, who showed me by example that it's important to do whatever we can, big or small, to protect the environment. Uh, he was going to be with us tonight from Maine, but the storm that blew through here the last couple of days took out his electricity. Um, to ecologist Nikki Cagle, who inspired me by her defense of snakes and her own efforts to get out along the Eno and photograph, and my cousin, former Eno Park Superintendent Wade Harmon, who also loves the river and worked hand in hand with Margaret Nygaard. I am so proud to be part of this wonderful group, and I want to thank you for joining us today, and I hope you find something in these photos that connects you to your environment. Super. Thank you so much, Scotty. That was really, really lovely. And I am just going to walk you very gently just up so you can just see a little bit closer to some of these sets of photos. I'm not going to look at every single one of them, but just so you get a little feeling um, of what you can go and explore later when you come back and have a wander around these rooms. And you're going to, what you're going to see is that every single set of images is very slightly differently laid out on the walls. You're going to see an awful lot of different variation in the styles of photography. Um, and it's all been done with a lot of thought. Every single person in the group here um, has put their own stamp on their own wall. Um, and even the walls were tailored to the type of images that they wanted to put on them. And not only have they learned about projects, the whole thing culminating in this wonderful um, exhibition, um, hopefully they could all go away and create their own exhibitions, uh, which or they've even got a, hopefully got a taste of it. But thank you very much, Scotty. That was really, really lovely. And it's been an absolute delightful to have you here. And I'm sure one of the things that we had a little meeting last night and one thing that everybody said as we went through how each person's work has inspired each other person's work. So there's people in the group that have done something and another person in the group doesn't want to copy, but it's just see, set a seed in their head as to what they could possibly do in the future. So thank you very much. Right, now moving on around the room, we have Yana's work. Now, again, Yana, you're going to put me right here because I'm sure I'm not going to say your surname right. Is it Yana Kotoneva? Kotoneva. Kotoneva, you can pronounce it a lot better. Let me just line up so that we can see all these images beautifully. But, but it was not bad. Yeah, okay, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it, the floor is yours, Yana. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I'm from Finland. And as, as I am not a native English speaker, I wrote my words down so I can be sure that I can tell you all that I want to tell you. And so I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, I started this year with next year's calendar in my mind. Uh, soon I realized I have to deep uh, dive deep into my pack catalog to make it happen, as I'm not the most organized person to edit my images. Then I wanted to know what else do I have and how they would represent me and the way I see things around me. 
could I find words to my work? So it became this year's topic, going through my back catalog, looking for unedited images and finding out what I want to say with my images and what kind of bodies of images and work I could form out of them. I gave myself a year this year to work on clarifying my thoughts and finding themes in my images. I gave myself permission to let go of photographing, pushing, pushing, and just to be with my images. At June, I had a fundamental experience in a nature photography event. After that, I asked myself if I had to do a presentation, what would I tell about my images? I started writing down what I believe in. A piece by piece, I started to see themes and several ongoing bodies of work grew out of there. When Charlie first spoke about doing this exhibition, I immediately knew my images would be about small findings. We have so many possibilities in our everyday life just to look around and make small adventures through small findings. Even in the cities, there are so much we don't pay attention into nature. Something that wasn't there can exist and something that was there but invisible can take a shape and form. My images in the exhibition are all about finding small things inside and outside of you, paying attention what's going on. What do I see and what do I feel? A simple leaf on your backyard or a flower bouquet on your table can take you to a new universe. It's a smidgen of imagination and playfulness, freeing yourself from expectation of ordinary. During this year, I have got plenty of clarity to my photography that I want to cherish and treasure small findings from everyday and mundane nature. Expressing my feelings and experiences as I grow as a person has become also important. This year and this group with Charlie have been profound in creating the basis of my wider photographic work and changing my old beliefs to a sustainable ones. If I look back to January, I have no calendar, but I have more, a solid place for calendar to be born when it's time for it. I go to land of dreams and I am bursting with joy are my two series. I hope you enjoy them and I hope also that you can find small findings from your surroundings. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Jana. That's really, really lovely. And as Jana said, there were two bodies of work in here that she's pulled together. And when you go round, you can enjoy. I go to the Land of Dreams on the left-hand side and I am bursting with joy on the right-hand side. Um, and, you know, I think uh, Jana said she she went through her back catalogue um, a lot of this year. What she didn't say was she went photographing in the last month and made 4,000 images. So her back catalogue is growing considerably, isn't it, Jana? Yeah. <laughs> Which is good that it's inspiring you to make that many photos. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of time to go through and edit them. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a, it's beautiful though, and it's very very contemplative work. Um, ICM, um, and I hope you enjoy uh, looking at these images. What I would say is I didn't say before each of these um, photographers that you're seeing has not only worked on their photography but as part of the project course together we have learned how to make artist statements and how to write artist statements, how to write about around with our photography and in doing that um i think most of them will probably admit that that was probably one of the hardest bits was actually to write about the images um and it was one of the things that i probably had to ask for the most times uh getting the photos was no problem at all but but getting somebody's writing is is a whole other case and i've been there before and i know how difficult it can be to write something um 
an interesting part was that having gone through this myself, I encouraged them to start looking at the artist statements actually halfway through the year, not at the end of the year. I felt it would help them keep the project moving, give them more clarity around sort of May, June time when you start sort of questioning or the, the ideas come together. So the whole year we've worked together and sort of built very, very gradually in sort of module form, not too formally, but everything I've offered to them has helped them keep going throughout the year. So um, so please do, when you go around the exhibition, I would really urge you to look at the um, artist statements so that you can, you, you've blessed here this evening and that you're hearing them all speak. But if you want to go back and look, um, what they've done is kind of put a little potted, uh, potted attempt at what they're just telling you on the wall next to the images so that you can understand it a little bit better. Right, so next we have Yana. Ostby? <laughs> Is that right, Yana? Yeah, Yana Ostby, <laughs> almost. <laughs> and Yana's looking extremely festive this evening. I've got my tinsel Christmas tree behind me um, in my yucca plant, but that's about as festive as I'm going. So um, brilliant. Well, I'm just going to move in very slightly, but we'll have a, a look afterwards. So um, Yana, please tell us about your project. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, my name is Jan Nusby and I'm from the southern part of Nor Norway. I uh, enjoy being out in nature and I take pictures of whatever catches my eye when I'm outside. I think uh, <clears throat> photography helps me um, stay in the moment and connect uh, to myself and also to the things that I see. So um, my photographs are not uh, documentary photographs. They are ICMs or multiple exposures, and they are my impressions. And you could almost say that they are my memories of uh, my walks out in nature. So I will catch uh, colors or light, um, different things that I just find beautiful <laughs> or that impact me in the moment. Uh, the pictures you will see are taken um, all within uh, five kilometers of where I live here in Norway. And uh, they are taking, taken during this last year. Um, I hope you, you enjoy it. Super, thank you so much, Jana. And I am insanely jealous of the light that you have there. Um, certainly when it's very grey and rainy, like 90% of the time here, um, the light that you capture in these images is absolutely beautiful. Now I'm just going to go in a little bit further just so you can get a feeling of um, this area here. And you can just see some of the images. Now it's very interesting. What you see on these walls is a very, very small snippet of what these uh, photographers here have created during the year. Some have been more prolific than others. Some had a very, excuse me, some had a really good idea at the start. Some people had to work quite hard on deciding what they were doing. Other people had so many pictures to choose from. It was um, quite difficult to make the final choice of what would go on the wall. Um, what's lovely is that everybody's got a lot of space. Um, I gave everybody a total of around 10 images to put on the walls because I felt any more than that it would start to look a bit cluttered but believe me to choose 10 images um how was it for you Jana picking 10 just 10 images from what you created this year well it was difficult but at the same time um, I decided to uh, concentrate um, my uh, images around the uh, um, perhaps three of my walks out in nature. So I wanted to have the start with a bull image that um, I think is kind of dreamy, like Yana, the other Yana. <laughs> and uh, then the autumn colors, I like those. And I uh, tried a new technique that I hadn't done before with uh, multiple exposure in camera. And then I also like to have uh, a little bit from winter because that's what we are entering now. Yeah, brilliant, super. 
it's lovely to see. So thank you so much for uh, putting these on the wall and joining us and telling us a little bit about uh, how they all came about. All right. Now we've got three rooms to wander through very gently. I'm just going to... If those that have seen me do this before in the group will know that my coordination has got a little better since we started. <laughs> it's still quite difficult to remember my left from my right as I'm going around. So next we have Margaret Stapper. And Margaret, as you have <coughs> heard, is in Australia. So the floor is yours, Margaret. Are you still with us? Are you there, Margaret? Have you muted? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Good, <laughs> good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I've called my project Healing, Reconnecting, and Home. I'm Margaret Stupper, but I'm also Margaret McLaughlin, and I am Margaret Wells. For this project, I've investigated if making images could help heal some painful times in my life and reconnect me with my past and the many places I have called home. In 2022, I set myself the task to learn more about Photoshop. And to do that, I decided to create some composite images from photos of myself that were in a box I had not opened for many years. The first image in my collection to the left is a um, is one of three images I created last year. In this image, you can see the eight-year-old Margaret Wells and the 40-year-old Margaret McLaughlin being greeted by the Margaret Stopper I am now. In creating this and two similar images, I walked a journey towards wholeness as my life had felt segmented. Then in November 2022, just as I finished making these three images, I traveled to the Netherlands on a family holiday. As part of that holiday, I did a course with Charlie, introducing me to the technique of in-camera movement. Then at the start of this year, Charlie offered the opportunity to be part of a project group and mentor us for a year, and here I am. I look back at the notes I made in February this year as we started together, and what you see here is not what I intended to do. However, conversations and thoughts kept drawing me back to explore my memories, and using imagery and in-camera movement seemed a perfect way to do this. I've called many places on the east coast of Australia home. And so I decided to revisit this year most of my previous homes and make images that gave a sense of place and memory. My photographs have words with them to explain the significance of each of them in my life. I hope you will come back and read later. Sometimes these places and memories have held a lot of pain. And in traveling this journey, this group of people have supported and encouraged me. And Charlie. Charlie has a way of supporting and helping us to refine our skills and give us space to explore our ideas as she mentors. Making these images has helped me to expose some of the hard things in life that were hidden away in place and time, the places you see here. And in doing so, I have reconnected with experiences, joys and sadnesses that have become my life. Most people my age have had difficult times in their life, many far more difficult than mine. Maybe in viewing my photographs and reading my words, you will find healing space to soften and reconnect with your own memories. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Margaret. And it's been an absolute pleasure to have Margaret here from Australia. And she has joined us at four o'clock in the morning, her time, many a time in her dressing gown, <laughs> wrapped up to the <laughs> absolute during the winter. Um, so it's been lovely. Yesterday, we, we you joined us and it was light for the first time, I think, Margaret, wasn't it? 
Yes, this is the first time it, um, that it's been um, a bit more sensible hour of, of the day. Usually it's four o'clock in the morning. And, and but that's, it, it, go on. it's been wonderful. And that's a testament to your determination and willingness to stick with it. And uh, we went through and we had a little bit of review review last night and she said, I, I've got things that I didn't like. And I was fully expecting it to be the fact that she had to get up. And actually, that wasn't what the one thing at, at, that uh, she found a challenge of it. So that that was really lovely. And as Margaret said, she started with a completely different idea. And this has sort of blossomed during the year um, with encouragement and you know, a lot of miles, I think, uh, under the belt to do this one. I think sort of miles wise, I think you've traveled more than any of us to do this project. Did, did you keep track of how many miles you've tri driven, Margaret, or not? Uh, no, but uh, the furthest point uh, from us is, that I went to is Dolby. And it is, how far is Dolby from here? 1,200. Uh, 1,200 kilometers. For us to for me to go to Dolby, so um, that was a fair track, yes. Yeah, that that's some trek because there doesn't even I think even if you went around the Netherlands about four times, you wouldn't get up to that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but it's it's been so lovely to have you, and also uh, the the project that's been born out of this, and this is one I would really urge you to go and have a look at the words. Um, because I think as much as pictures tell a story, sometimes the words can add an awful lot to the stories um, yes. as well. So it's um, it's one really lovely. And what some of these, when you go in and have a look at them, some of the pictures won't have an awful lot of words, but Margaret has added the descriptions on each of the pictures. So if when you click on a picture, you will actually be able to go and access any extra descriptions or information that she's put on behind the pictures as well, just to give you a little bit more insight as well as the words that you see on the wall. Um, and again, the, the journey, the way we've put it on the wall here shows uh, this um, sort of, development uh through the time that she's scaled um during the project which has just been absolutely lovely and uh like a couple of the others in the group it's been absolutely lovely to have met margaret and i could never imagined that somebody would uh come from australia and come and meet me in Oxford holland to come and do a workshop so that was absolutely wonderful so thank you very much for being part of uh, the group margaret thank you charlie it's been absolutely um uh well, a game changer for my photography. And certainly it's also been um, quite a, well, this one's been quite an emotional journey. And now I've completed my book as well. Um, and uh, I feel like I'm ready to move to uh, some new, new styles and new things for next year. And I'm looking forward to that too. Brilliant. And it was lovely. Last night we all met up just for the last time to catch up and do a review. And there were there were books, there were calendars, there were um, pieces of artwork, um, all kinds of things. It was wonderful to see the, the projects. There are an awful lot of projects in here that maybe aren't quite finished. Um, so it's it's uh, some of them are a little bit ongoing. Some of them are completed. Some of them were never meant to be only a year long. Some of them, um, you know, they will continue to, to run a little bit further. So the next uh, set of images we have are from Angie. And um, I would just like to talk you through these so you have a little bit of um, background on Angie's images. So Angie's project is called Nature's Colour Palette. And um, she's written me something lovely to read to you. A garden takes on many guises throughout the year, but in my opinion, there is one constant. That constant is colour. Flowers come, flowers go. They are rarely pristine for long. Capturing individual flowers when they're at their most perfect can be a bit of a challenge. A, key, a keen gardener, I feel flower photography is a natural extension to this hobby. Am I drawn to a particular flower or species? I'd say no. Their colour, form, texture, scent, growth habit or usefulness, usefulness for wildlife in the garden makes them all potential subjects for me, my camera and my lens. I'm often asked if I have a favourite flower, and my answer to that question is, well, it depends on what's in, the, in flower on any given day. As well as garden flowers, flowers in their natural habitat have a way of drawing me in. The wind on an open roadside verge creates a wonderful sight, especially in June when they're full to bursting. 
The flowers and the grasses jostle for position and attention. Mother Nature is the gardener, the perfect gardener. I use multiple exposure to ex accentuate that feeling, nature's very own tapestry. I prefer to photograph flowers when wherever they grow, no matter what environment they find themselves in, using natural light. Although this can and does have its own obstacles, I've started experimenting more with my camera and how I capture those flowers. I've put my own creative twist, my own creative twist on the images. Conventional sharp images, ICM, intentional camera movement, multiple exposures, out of focus, or more often than not, a combination of all these different techniques. They come together even either in camera or post-processing, and both methods help me convey what I'm trying to express and what I want to share with you to the viewer. So what you see are um, two sets of images, and the ones on the left are the wildflower images that Angie's talking about here. Um, which are very different to the ones on the right. And Angie's had quite an amazing journey this year. Um, and quite literally, it sounds a bit cliche, but to blossom <laughs> from the middle of the year um, with her flower photography. And again, this is uh, Angie's project changed a number of times during the year, but these have come out of it. And as I say, these are the wildflower images on the left hand side. And then these are the more perfect garden flower images that you see. Um, and I think it was probably these ones sort of erring towards something on the right hand side that she had in her mind, but drawn to all kinds of flowers. You can't help be taken by the daisies that waft in the breeze. Um, and as Angie said, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it, the flower that you see is the perfect flower. Uh, and I'm sure she has got um, a favorite, but um, it's, it's just a lovely couple of sets of images. And again, I hope you enjoy going in and having a look at them, reading the artist statement. Um, and enjoying these uh, really unique multiple exposures that she's put together of these garden flowers. Um, I don't do macro photography, um, so I'm quite in awe of how sharp some of these images are. Um, but again, you'll see when you go between the two sets, how very, very different and how amazing it is that the various techniques that she's used to pull these all together. So thank you very much for um, joining us with those, Angie. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with the group. Right, so we shall move on here. And my next individual photographer is Valerie Huggins. And I'm just lining up Valerie so that we can see your images a little bit clearer. There we go. Are you well are you still with us, Valerie? I am still here. Super. <laughs> you can hear me. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. And thank you very much for coming here and, and listening to our stories. Um, my project is more research based. Early last year, I realized that I was getting a bit stuck with my photography and wasn't quite sure what to do. I went to an exhibition of, of women abstract artists. And I suddenly realized when I was listening to people talking about photography, that Famous photographers were usually mentioned when men's names. There were very, very few women's names mentioned when you talked about, particularly about abstract photography. So I decided to find out more about the work of female photographers. And I started with a photographer called Florence Henri, who was photographing a hundred years ago. And she was very much looking with mirrors and objects and creating these amazing abstract images. And that sparked my journey. And I then went on to try and replicate some of her techniques. And that made a difference to my photography. So I went on and looked at a, a photographer called Uta Bart, who's a German who now works in America. And she spent the last 30 or 40 years chasing light around different buildings. An idea that I would not, never have thought of, but this idea of a project that goes right the way through your work over many years. And I spent several days just chasing light through my house as my daylight and shone on different walls. And But trying out her techniques helped me very much in creating sets of photographs. I then encountered the work of a photographer called Francis Seward, who again, he's British, but he's now working in the USA, partly because of the amazing light there. And what she does is takes different colored glass and shines light through it and creates abstract images. 
And that made me look at macro photography um, and also the, the idea of changing the objects in different ways to create different images. And the next photographer to grab my attention after that was Olga Karlovac, who is a Croatian photographer. And I like the way that she actually captures movement and emotions, often by walking in the rain. I was really intrigued because now I could use the ICM in my images. And I liked the way that she had managed to find a signature style, which is something I'm still, as you can see, really struggling to find. But she takes photographs as she walks along the street so I could go to my local town when it was pouring with rain and take images. And Olga's photos, she represents them all in black and white, but I really liked that pop of colour. So although you can look at somebody's photos and try out their style, you can then personalise it and it really helps your own photography. If you find yourself stuck with your photography, I recommend this. Find an artist, a, a photographer that you um, can look at their work and then try out some of their techniques because it certainly made me look at different ways of photographing. Um, the other thing is I'm going to continue this journey next year, hopefully looking at other photographers, but and looking at the female gaze, what is it that women photographers prefer to photograph? Is there something about women's photography? I was fascinated that this group, we are all women. We are all creatives. We are all looking at individual things. Um, why is it that perhaps women are, are attracted to this way of working? I don't know yet. But doing this project with Charlie and the group has provided an ideal audience for my work and a real sounding board as I've experimented and tried out different things. And it's not a case of being perfect with my photography, but actually finding ways of expressing who I am and how I'm feeling about a place and a space. And I'd like to thank them all for their help and encouragement along the way. Super. Thank you so much, Valerie. That was absolutely lovely. And we heard earlier that uh, Jana had a huge back catalogue to work from. I think Valerie had the biggest challenge of how many images or which images to put on the wall. As she just mentioned, she has studied four different photographers. And for every one of these photographers, she has created a body of work. Um, not only of her own, she's pulled together work from the individual photographer, she's written about them, she's explored them. What's lovely is that Valerie's also been writing a blog and um, the blog link is attached to the photos when you go and look at them later. So you can go and uh, look at a little bit more if you want. Um, so Valerie, how did you decide on these two photographers in the end to share as opposed to which of the other four, other two that you might have shared? I just think I I, I really love the colour that came from experimenting with the way Francis Seawood worked, which is the ones on the right. Yeah. Um, and they just fitted together. Um, they, the idea of sunshine and light and joy that you can see, you know, that comes from there. And so the, having done that, I then thought, well, well, the other side of it is is rain. And that's why I went with Olga's work as well. Yeah. So sunshine and rain. <laughs> Yeah, we sometimes see the sunshine, don't we? But it's <laughs> but you're so right. It's 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 wonderful that you can go out and actually say, you know, it's raining today, so I can actually go and make the time for photos that I want to. How wonderful to choose that as a project. It's it's really lovely. Um and Valerie's work has been a lot more than just photography. It's been really, really researching, experiencing. And I myself am in awe of what she's done. I am insanely jealous of her uh, sort of commitment to what she's managed to achieve um, and what she says about picking a photographer and exploring and reading about them and finding out and digging del delving in then maybe trying to kind of not copy them but like embrace the con concepts and the ideas that uh, they have used is an absolutely fantastic idea if you're struggling with a little bit of inspiration or if you're wanting to get into a new style of photography or finding a new project um, so again do go and read uh, a little bit about the um, photographers, as I say, that uh, Valerie's looked at the, the information's on the wall. As you've seen, some of these uh, sets have more words than others on the wall. Um, and even the, the small amount of words that have gone on the wall was quite, again, quite a hard challenge to bring down to what we uh, 
pull on the walls. And again, this was all part of the curation experience, how to balance these walls up. And you'll see that every single set is slightly different. How Valu chose the one larger imager on the left, uh, one larger image on the left to match with these other ones here on the right, and then setting these other images round the corner. Um, very, very slightly different, a bit like Angie. She's got some square ones and some um, uh, sort of more landscape ones. Again, very carefully put in an order. Um, as there's a lot of thought gone into all of the laying out of these presentations by all the artists involved. So thank you very much for that, Valerie. Right, through into the last room. Hopefully you're all still with us, <laughs> enjoying it. All right, let's go in here. And I'd just like to say, I haven't paid any of these guys to say nice things about me. <laughs> I am sat here blushing desperately when uh, everybody's saying lovely things about the group. And I could say lots and lots of lovely things about everybody else as well. So um, it's just wonderful to hear how much everybody's enjoyed their time doing this uh, this group together. So Camilla, are you still here with us? I'm still here. I'm still here. Brilliant. The floor is yours. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Charlie. Um, so I'm Camilla and I live in Brussels in Belgium. Um, this hasn't always been my home, but I've lived here for about 10 years now. Um, I was originally from the UK, but I, I somehow found myself here. Um, and um, photography has really helped me to discover my city and learn to love um, all the Brussels and all its little quirks and, and all the lovely things to see here. Um, although some of these pictures weren't taken in Brussels because um, I sometimes go other places too, but they were all taken in Belgium. Um, and really my project arose out of the fact that I tend to go to a lot of the same places and and I see a lot of the, the classic tourist images of the Grand Place and Antwerp Station and the Atomium. And I was trying to like feel like, how can I get a new perspective on all the same old places I go because <laughs> it's hard to go to exotic locations a lot of the time you just go to work and you don't have very much time I, I have to shoot in snatches of time I find here and there and how do you keep up the inspiration and how do you um, continue to find joy in photography when you, you haven't got some fabulous exciting location to go to but it realizes it's all about your perspective on where you are um, and that's what I really wanted to work on, was sort of seeing the familiar in different ways and seeing the unexplored things, just that were right there in front of me, but I didn't see. I guess a bit like what Jana was saying about those small things that you tend to let pass you by. Um, so I've, all of these are multiple exposure images, um, all of them. And so I was thinking this year more in terms of like uh, using images as kind of layers of paint to build up um, more more than what you can just see in one frame. Um, so I was trying to create more um, of the feeling of the place rather than necessarily how it looks exactly in reality. Um, so that that's really what I focused on today on um, this year was building up multifaceted like images of lots of layers and um, lots of little things that I hadn't noticed before and trying to find yet yeah, inspiration in um, the the familiar around me. There's one of these, like uh, one of these I took on the way back from the dentist. <laughs> one of them I took like on my journey just to got off the tram one stop, like different, like, so it was just like trying to find like different things um, around me. One of these I took like less than a kilometer from my house. So, you know, it's just, um, there's so much beauty out there when you look for it. So much, uh, so many new things that I hadn't really seen. So, um, yeah, and you know, I enjoyed playing with color because color's really my thing. Sometimes I dabble a bit of black and white, but I always end up back to try and make things colorful. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's just, um, and it's also what Valerie is saying about getting a bit stuck sometimes, but I found that this approach helped me to become a bit more unstuck because it was doing something different to what I'd done before. Um, and I think that's it, really. Super. Brilliant. Thank you so Thanks. much. And probably yours was one of the projects that you had a fairly good idea at the start, didn't you, Camille? Well, within about a month or so. I mean, let's yeah. say that you knew what you were going to do. Yeah. 
and built it up gradually over the year. And it's actually really, really interesting. You'll, you'll notice there's not too many uh, portrait images and to see a whole line of portrait images here on the wall, I think they stand out beautifully and really amazingly. And again, the layout is something that we've looked at and that's why you've got your, the two images that are separate on either end because they all they tell part of the story, but they're very different to the other set there. Um, and as Camilla was saying, she's used some really interesting multiple exposure techniques going in and having a look. And I've no, I've, I don't think I've been to Brussels, to be honest, um, and had a look around. Oh, but come. the <laughs> I'll come and see you sometime. Come see me. Come see me. I'll show you around. <laughs> it's uh, very inspiring. And I think probably a lot of us, when we think of Brussels or maybe we think of Bruges, this is probably... Uh, what what maybe we think of uh, like pretty townhouses we don't think of um, this amazing sort of modern architecture and colors and just the difference between you know this these this image here and these which almost look a little bit more traditional um, and this one here Camilla has it mm -hmm. has an individual involved doesn't it the name of oh something? that's Magritte um so he's had this like exhibition on in Brussels recently where he's, I think he's 120, 125 year anniversary. And they just like painted him randomly on lots of buildings, that like guy with a hat. And so I thought I've got to get him in there really as a sort of Belgian icon. So I tried to work him into that image. I kind of like it. Yeah. No, I think it's it's really, really lovely to, to see them. And it does inspire me to go to Brussels, but it also does inspire me. I mean, I do an awful lot of work um, in, from my own, not, not literally my own back garden, but nearly. Um, and I completely understand how it's it's quite a challenge sometimes coming up with new ideas. But when you start looking, and I think it's a, a running theme, um, and I think it's sort of been part of the running theme of the year is just slowing down a little bit and being a little bit more mindful of what you're looking to photograph and taking the time to just give yourself the chance to enjoy what you're doing and what you see on these walls nobody is a professional photographer here everybody is an amateur everybody's doing it for uh, a love an escape a way of uh, relaxing out of a job or out of a situation they're in um, and so I think that's really really important to remember that you know none of what you're seeing is is put on the walls because anybody's paying them to do it what what they've done is they've done this out of love and determination um to to make something for themselves and enjoy what they're doing um and i think it's just so lovely to see so many different i'm sure you've already started to realize how very different every single project is um and that's what's so lovely about bringing this group together it's just so so diverse so thank you very much for that camilla right thank you for the support this year you're welcome Right, so next we come to Mary Seddon, and make sure I get all the pictures in there, Mary. Um, what you will see just before Mary starts, you might see, think that they're slightly offset. Some of these pictures, when you stand directly in front of them, they are all perfectly laid out. I would just like to say it's just the angle you're looking at <laughs> when I stand here. Um, so when you go and have a look at them yourselves, you will be able to look at them all really neatly. So Mary, the floor is yours. Oh, well, good evening to everyone. Thank you all for coming and staying this long because it's a it's a, it's such a wonderful exhibition with so many different people. And mine are very different to everybody else's as well. Mine is a sort of parallel story, um, as, uh, as Charlie well knows, in that um, how I came to be taking these pictures was because my husband was walking the southwest coastal footpath for the last four years, which is a distance of about 630 miles. So not a patch on what Margaret was doing with going over to Dalby, but it still meant we did a lot of mileage and we were going for all the way through um, Somerset through all the way around to Dorset and this is only two and a half hours three hours maximum from our house but it did mean that you had that opportunity and it also meant my husband who normally has a threshold of about 20 minutes uh, allowing me to take photographs um, I had the whole day because I was dropping him off at the beginning of the day and picking him up and sometimes finding him alongside the way and we don't, you don't realise what such fabulous spaces we've got on our doorstep. Um, and so all of these pictures were inspired by my journey with Charlie, which started about two years ago. Um, and quite a few of these were actually taken in the last six months as we were basically coming to the end of the journey. 
Um, and ICM came into my life when I met Charlie. <laughs> And, and I showed her some pictures of some courgettes. <laughs> and um, I don't, I mean, I just love the way that what it does is it helps you look at things with sort of different eyes and different light. Um, and it can get rid of the untidy bits in pictures. So I've got something like about 3,000 pictures from this, this particular journey, but about 400, 500 of those have been ICMs. Um, and so I did have a little bit of a challenge trying to pick ones that made a cohesive group because quite a lot of them didn't match in colour and um, lots of different coastal bits were uh, quite different. So the challenge to me was um, also Charlie telling us to maybe sit down and wait for 30 minutes before you took a picture. And that really doesn't come naturally to me because I usually go down and go click, 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 click. And so at least three of these pictures came about because I sat for half an hour watching the light and watching how they worked on the waves. And I, I really started to appreciate more of the small details that you can see. And other people in the group also encourage you to do that which is that's the wonderful thing about working with such a group of fantastic people is that their small findings, as Yana will put it, are things that I started to see as well. And so by sharing their journeys with me, I started to change my journey. My journey went a completely different direction to where I started from. Although I was intending to do a photo book, I wasn't quite imagining it would turn out like this. So, um, so the story for, for me is um, I haven't quite finished my book, um, but I've got a long way towards it. Um, and I've also discovered new things in me that I didn't realise. I didn't realise I could even write words that weren't scientific papers for publication. So it's been a, a, a quite, a, quite a challenge for me and by having the support of this group around me and Charlie to make certain that I've done something once a month I must admit I will be the one that was always putting my homework in last and I apologize I always intended at the beginning of the month to start well and I never quite managed that but um, thank you everybody for, for taking the time and go down I mean, it's such a wonderful place the, the sea the waves come in the waves go out and they sort of, it's an uplifting place, whether it's windy and wet or sunny. I always find my, it's the same as going into the garden. I find my soul, I feel better for having been there. So this has been a fantastic journey, this last sort of um, four years, because every weekend we've been going and having another visit to the sea. So thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the pictures. Super. Thank you so much, Mary. And she did allude to the fact that her husband did the walking and not really you, wasn't it, Mary? Yeah, yeah. I, did just, I did the very important bit, which was the picking up and the dropping off. And probably without that, coffee. Yeah. And, and we said last night, Mary was saying that her husband made photos as well as she did. So we, I, I suggested there might be quite a tongue in cheek book of the person that did the work and the person that did the photography. Um, and I look forward to seeing that blossom uh, for the end of the year. And as, as Mary said, you know, this was actually a really challenging one to get on the wall um, because of the diverse range of the photos having been made over such a long period of time. And they kind of been started before the project came to um, came to to be as well but like Mary said a lot of these have been made um, in the last 12 months and the way we've kind of laid them out on the wall is to tell the journey of sort of walking through the farmland to get to the top of the uh, to get to the top of the coast path and walking it seeing the vistas getting down close with the water and then uh, chose to put the, the sunset at the end, which was like a closing of the project, basically, um, until she's finished making the uh, the photo book. But again, a really, really interesting journey. 
Um, and again, there's a, a lot more on there in the artist statement to write. And as Mary said, you know, this, it was a challenge to write flowery words, wasn't it, rather than scientific words, I think, for this. So uh, it could very easily be a scientific book, but that would be too easy, Mary. So you have to make it a bit <laughs> personal. Um, but it's been an absolute joy to have you with the group. And, and just so anybody thinks I am not a homework tyrant. And nothing I say has to be done. It's it's all very much on your own uh, doing. But, you know, these guys have helped each other along so much in behind the scenes between the, the monthly meetings. Um, everybody sort of cheated each other up and suggested things and shared information that's come through. Um, and actually the exhibition, everybody could choose whether they wanted to take part in the exhibition as well. Um, I never said anybody had to. So luckily everybody did say they wanted to and it was a wonderful thing but um even then there was sort of wobbles from some people about whether they were good enough to put their images on the wall and I'm just so delighted that every single one decided but again I wouldn't say peer pressure but everybody supported each other and encouraged everybody to get involved which again was a lovely thing from this group so thank you very much for that Mary a lovely walk along the coast path <laughs> Right, and last but not least, I'm sure Carol has been sat there going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, crossing my fingers, crossing my toes. When's it going to be my turn? Eventually we'll get to you. So let me just line up here. I think I'm a little bit too far over to the right here, so I'm just going to have to back up again. A bit like uh, turning a horse around here. <laughs> it's uh, let me just line this up a little bit better. You'll see I'm using, uh, I will take you around in a minute. Sometimes I use the arrows and sometimes I use the mouse. It just depends on how um, particular you want to be about the directions that you're moving. So um, I'm just going to move back a little bit here and then take you back so that we can see a little bit better of what's around the corner here. So we'll just come in here, a little bit closer. There we go. Right. Are you still with us, Carol? I am. Although I have to say, when you said everybody chose to take part, I thought, is it too late to change my mind? Um, but no. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Carol Sinclair and I live um, down in Eastbourne on the south coast of England. Um, and I... I joined this group at the beginning of the year because my I'd lost my photographic mojo really um, life had got in the way as it often does and I wasn't going out with my camera and I wasn't you know taking photos my technical skills on the post-processing I didn't feel were very strong so there were lots of things that I wanted to work on but I just couldn't make the first step so I thought I oh, know I'll sign up for this group and perhaps it will give me the encouragement and the momentum that I need. And I have to say, Charlie and the other members of the group, thank you all so much for your support because it has made a huge difference. Every month having to come up with, you know, what I've done, how I've progressed has been an enormous boost to my photographic journey, which is why um, my part of the exhibition is called 2023 my road traveled um <clears throat> so what have i actually done well i just went out with my camera i just made myself go out and if something took my attention i just sort of went with it but i didn't just go with it that day i went with it for a month you know i spent a month really developing the idea um, so what you see here are several areas of particular interest that really developed during the course of the year. It's about my journey. So first of all, on the left, you can see um, reflections. And I just, I went to the local harbour and I looked and I thought, oh, you know, these colours on the water, the fleeting patterns, they're interesting. So I took quite a lot of photographs of the reflections. And then in fact, these two, I think were taken at Leeds dock. So I, but I, everywhere I go, I'm looking for these water reflections, looking for the colors, looking for the patterns. And I've been really, I've really enjoyed that. Um, the second panel of pictures uh, was 
I can't remember which month, maybe April or May. And that was my lens baby month. I've got a lens baby lens that was gathering dust. And I thought, I'm going to really make this the only lens that I use this month. So these were some of the results. I had quite a lot of results. And, and I really enjoyed the process as well of making panels, learning more in Photoshop, um, you know, just developing my techniques, really. Um, what else did I do? Um, then moving on, uh, ICM is something that uh, over a couple of years now, I've sort of flirted with it. And I think I'd like to develop that more, but I was quite pleased with these taken in Hastings. And then um, finally on the last wall, I went off to Leeds on a conversation meetup. Am I allowed to mention a rival? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <Not rivals. training. laughs> We're all part of a big family. <laughs> exactly. And and I it was just another example of how getting together with like-minded people can really you bounce ideas around and you develop your skills. So um I did um these are all multiple exposures these last three images um and again experimenting with a technique but I tended to sort of focus on one technique and really getting into it and trying to develop my skills so that they come more naturally to me in the future and so I hope you enjoy looking at those um as I say, thank you to everybody for coming to see us tonight, but especially thank you to Charlie for organising us all. <laughs> thank you very much, Carol. Um, wonderful set of images. And, you know, like, again, so much work during a year and choosing what little small snippets to put on the wall it is a massive challenge. You know, I know I can go out and shoot like a thousand reflections quite happily when I'm doing ICM or, you know, multiple exposures and lens baby. I've tried once and I just don't get on. So all, all uh, hail the anybody that can use a lens baby <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, and Carol many times has said, I don't think my project's a project um, because everybody has concentrated on a very specific sort of subject matter or concept. Um, and I think the wonderful thing about Carol's project, and again, you just see a very small part of it, is that, she, again, she made her own year project. And that year project was doing something different every month. And as you heard, it got Carol out with her camera every month. Um, do you think it's a, something you've learned now, Carol? Do you think it's an ingrained thing or do you think you'll still need to keep giving yourself challenges to keep yourself moving out there with your camera? Well, I think... I quite like the idea of, of coming up with panels of images from each outing almost, you know, going out and then coming up with a nine, you know, the three by three grid I've really enjoyed doing. And I've done that quite a few times. Um, I just, you know, I'm using more of my time to go out and get on and do, but also I've done quite a few online courses to develop my my technical skills you know the post processing side and it has given me the momentum and the feedback from the rest of the group i mean just brilliant it's a really nice way to work really good way to work i've really enjoyed it brilliant super thank you very much that concludes our um walk around with the artists themselves so what I'd just like to do is just take you very briefly just back to the start so I can just show you um hopefully you've seen me sort of maneuvering my way around here but I just wanted to show you how you can make the most of it when you come into the setup here um when you come back in let me just go out and so I'm just moving it all the things around here when you when I give you the um, link, what you're going to do is you are going to uh, come in to the site here, um, similar as to what you see in front of you. She says, here we go. And what you will be introduced to is this first panel in front of you. OK, you have the choice to enter the ex exhibition or start a guided tour. Essentially, what we've just been doing is entering the exhibition. When you enter the exhibition, you can walk around it as you wish. 
You can stop, you can go up to images, you can step back from them. You can take all the time in the world to read each subject matter. Um, you can go in, you can look at the information as you wish. If you choose to start the guided tour, what it will do, it's, it will take you round the whole exhibition and you can just sit there and do nothing. The only thing is, I will just say, when you start the guided tour, it will give you, I haven't counted exactly, but you've got between about three and five seconds to read everything, which in some situations is enough and other situations it's not. So what I would say is when you, if you do decide to come in this way, what you can do is if at any point you wish to slow down and just look at the um, the writing or the words, and what you're seeing is each each of the things that have gone on the wall, that's why it's focusing in on some uh, as you go along what you can do is pause the tour at any time okay so if you do want to spend a little more time looking at something you can pause the tour that's absolutely no problem when you come back to press on this arrow up here you need to go start tour don't go back to the start because that will take you all the way back to the start again but if you just press start tour it will start the process up again again you can just sit back enjoy the experience and it will just take you on to the next picture and so on OK, at any point, you can click on the information button. OK, and what it will do, she says, it's whizzed off there. It will give you a little bit more information about the image that you're looking at. OK, some people have got more than others. Some people just have a title and their, uh, and their name. Um, other people have a little bit more about the dimensions. Some of these images are for sale within here if you're interested. Um, if people have got their Instagram, you can go click on their Instagram account and go and give them a little bit of support. Blogs, web pages, everything like that, you will find actually attached to these photos that everybody's given. So that's how the um, it flows if you go in and look um, on your own uh, as you walk around. If, however, you would rather just come in and have a wander around, um, choose the exhibition route instead of taking a guided tour. You can use your mouse. You can grab and turn left and right with your mouse. You can point your mouse somewhere and click and it will take you towards the picture. OK, or you can use these arrows that you see here on the right hand side uh, forwards, backwards. So if you get a little bit too close, if you want to try and center yourself up to a picture, you can. If you would like the uh, you can send yourself up to a set if you want, but you could also by clicking how, hovering on anyone, you will see the artist and you will see the title. If you click on any picture, it will center it for you in the middle of your screen. OK, um, and you can look at that again, the same as before. You can press on the information button and you can find um, the information sat there uh, all about the picture. And then you can go back. Um, you can also just click forward the previous next. So it will just take you very clearly to the next image and you can roll along and enjoy these in beautiful technicolor information. If um, to exit the detail, you just press exit detail. If you would like to um, at any point, if you scroll down, this is a little bit of information about the project. If you want to go, you can view the exhibition catalog. That will take you into a catalog of every single um, piece of work that's on the walls. You can then go and click in those as well to look through if you're finding the um, whole exhibition experience whizzing around a little bit too much. Um, as I said, please do take the time to go and read the artist statements when you walk around. It's really, really valuable. If you can cope with a few more words, what you will see is as you come in through the um, the exhibition there are three panels on your right hand side one two and three they're all in the same place in each room and it's a little bit of information i've put up about each of the um about the project about the experience the guys have had um if, I, I think they've all said lots of lovely things but if you would like to see what it's been like to be part of the group um, they've all very kindly put a little bit of information about their experience on the last wall there on the right hand side. Um, what have I got to say uh, apart from what I hope you all enjoyed that. It was absolutely lovely. And I know how hard it was to keep that to a minimum for many of you. Um, and also some of you um, even to speak for two or three seconds, two or three minutes was probably uh, quite an ordeal as well. So um, I hope you've really enjoyed it. What I would say is I did um, say before, I will put on the um, the link that you can go and access. If you would like to just 
whiz in before I manage to get the link. All you need to do is put in uh, cuntsmatestricks.com. That's the name of the website. And when you go into the website, there's actually a search function at the top for, um, and you can just put in Charlotte Bellamy photography and it will take you to uh, the exhibition. But as I said, I will be placing the link to um, the exhibition. And also if anybody would like to share um, this evening, this will be going on to my YouTube channel as well tomorrow. So if anybody's missed it and you think it would be really interesting, you would like to share and let anybody know that it's been really useful to listen to the artists speak, that would be great. If it's wet your appetite, please do head on over to my website. This is about as marketing as I get, which is not very marketing at all. Um, it would be lovely to see you. I have two groups running next year. One is completely full. I opened up another one. I have just three spaces left um, for my second uh, project mentoring group next year. As I said, we'll run the whole year. If you're interested, pop in under the education, the online workshops. And when you pop in here, you'll see all the other offerings that I have um, for other online courses but down here on the right hand side is where you can find the project uh, personal project mentoring course if you want feel free to drop me an email or you can book direct on the site so that I think sums up the whole evening I am just going to check whether there are any questions in the chat there whether it's just people saying that they love your images <laughs> um, there's a lot to get through has anybody got any questions that you would like um, to ask any of the artists? There's lots and lots of lovely comments from everybody in here. <laughs> I can see not too many questions at all. That's brilliant, wonderful, really, really lovely. Thank you so much for all the comments, everybody. And it's been an absolute joy having you in there. Thank you very much for joining you, um, me and uh, the other nine ladies. Um, you're welcome to um, demute yourselves. We'll give everybody a, a cheesy round of applause. Um, thank you very much um, for everybody for joining us this evening. And um, if you're interested in the next year, it would be lovely to see you. So uh, have a lovely evening, have a lovely Christmas, New Year and um, maybe see you in 2024. Thank you very much for joining everybody. Good night. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. Charlie, Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. Bye. Bye.